Paddy Mac is really struggling to find my uh, chat channel, apparently. <laughs> he said there is no one there. Hmm, okay. Let's try channel Paddy. <laughs> he says he can join the channel. Let's try the channel Paddy can join. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, we'll figure it out. We'll find each other. Oh, that one is bugged. No, that one is not bugged. There, I see him. Hi, <laughs> hi. Uh, Night Phoenix is here, but in the other channel. He's coming. Uh, you can veto first. He's second. Uh, or did you guys already veto? Interesting Lambo opening. I'll take a look at it then. What is our opening? Ooh, what? Okay, that is interesting. <laughs> He's taking the gold next to the Zelda Hagen Watchtower. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, okay. They already vetoed. Awesome. Map 1, Ancient Cistern. I guess I'll host. If they want me to host, I'll host. Uh, WCS Game Heart. Sure, that's fine. Oh. Damn it. Wrong channel. Uh, I'll just invite Paddy Mac. It's easy. All right, the ner oh damn it! I d yeah, I did one prediction. I had a heart attack. Um, it's still running for a while, but I think we are good to go. It's 7 p.m. perfectly on time. Go go go! Buddy Mac and Night Phoenix. I don't think these nerds have ever played against one another. I'm gonna go at privacy. <laughs> oh my goodness! Sure. And I, <laughs> I always find this fascinate uh, fascination that these guys have quite remarkable. Where it's like <laughs> Buddy Mac is joking about it, saying he's a private man. It's like we're streaming the games. They're going to be uploaded on YouTube. But he's like, no match history, please. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, let's take a very quick look at Elite Galactic. Have these two ever played against one another? I highly doubt it. Maybe once, but... Penny Mac and Night Phoenix. When I came up with this, I was like, hey, that's actually a fun idea. Yeah. Two players, guys, that are high level and have literally never played against one another, according to Elite Galactic. So... Maybe a letter game here and there, but a pretty unique best of five here for us. Let's go ahead and enjoy it. I'm going to tune out of the ZVZ for now, but you guys can just let me know what's happening there. Let's go ahead and hop into our second best of five tonight. 100 bucks on the line, 80 for the winner, 20 for the loser. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who's been asking for many weeks. When is it my time again, Roddy? When can I play? And I said, all right, as soon as you're out of Dream Mac, I'll make sure that you can play again. Representing Hot Headed Gaming, a young man from Ukraine. This is Night Phoenix. And he's going to do it out with this man who I've asked quite a few times in the past, but he was never able to because he had university obligations. But this time around when I asked, he said, I'm available, I'm ready, I'm down. I said, all right, then you're in. Hailing from the US of A, the beautiful state of California, this is Paddy Mac. Who is the favorite here? I've got absolutely no idea. Paddy Mac has surprised me in the past. He has played a couple of very impressive series, especially the last Home Story Cup that I think back off. Uh, he was playing surprisingly well. Normally, we always kind of favor the Europeans a little if we don't know uh, what's what, but I, I think this is very close to 50-50. I just hope it's not a 3-0 and then I'm happy. Hi, Roddy. Sorry if you already covered it, but did you hear anything about BlizzCon? Will NC2 be represented? Uh, I have heard absolutely nothing about BlizzCon, though. No. I have zero contact with anyone from Blizzard in this day and age. I don't know. Nobody from ESL told me anything. I just have zero expectations and I hope they surprise me. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is my plan. Doesn't seem like this gold base is quite, uh, quite kicking in for our man Lambo, by the way. Paddy Mac is not just... Oh, what? <laughs> what? Uh, big rain plays, big rain bounce, guys, <laughs> as we have a uh, Bob Ross Zelot as well being planted down in the main base. Excusez-moi, we're gonna let the Nexus finish up and recall some adepts in and kill a couple probes or something, what, <laughs> what is this? 
some Florencio vibes, but I didn't think it's quite the same. Petty Mac. Bringing out that NA creativity here in game one. Infinity says he does this a lot. Well, then I must have not been able to watch a lot of Petty Mac. Uh, four stalkers, that's a lot of DPS. I would not let this Nexus finish up. I think we just have to cancel this, no? And we just end up canceling it. So that's 100 minerals down the drain. It was a scout, but it was obviously an investment that tied up a lot of resources. As I see that Sarah has taken the trio already. Jeez Louise. Yona unleashed, guys. Sarah is uh, mighty fine. Yeah, what I want to say, Anna. Is, uh, Paddy Mac is not just from California. If you follow him on Instagram, he really is a proper California boy. Driving around in like a Camaro convertible. Living the dream. <laughs> Paddy Mac's Instagram is a treat. I, I watched it and I wish I was young again. Because he's living a good life by the looks of it. Uh, game 1, however, is not going all that hot. Adapts are not great against Stalkers. The Stalker numbers are high. At least one Stalker defensively with the Force Fields maybe is going to be okay. But I wanna, uh, he's going to lose another Adept here. I think that's inevitable. Now even that Stalker is going to be a target. Force Field. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it actually sneaks out on the right side too. It's a bit of a disaster for Petty Mac as the battery gets one shot at as well. He does have an Immortal and the Immortal should keep him safe. So maybe Crisis averted, disaster avoided. As now a force field would be very painful. We could drop a force field and we do. Disaster turns into greatness. Petty Mac popping up here in game one. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why I often call it Big Daddy Immortal, guys. Uh, who's gonna tell me that that big boy did not have a big impact on how all of that played out? Talking about turning a game on its head. A game where you feel literally nothing works out and suddenly everything works out. Now the Immortacon is at 2. Stalkers are gonna have a hard time even finding an Adept or a Sentry here. They do get an Adept, but in the return, two Stalkers drop incredibly low in HP. They don't die, but I actually think that is a problem. Because that means the next time around these armies flirt with one another, these Stalkers die so much quicker. Night Phoenix is being overly aggressive here. As now even a Sentry kills a Stalker. The Immortals kill another Stalker. Jeez Louise. Eight Stalkers have died in a six minute game. Stalkers ain't cheap units. As Paddy Mac has a War Prism flying towards the other side of the map. Flies over the Prism. And game 1 looks very good for our boy from the Golden State. As Night Phoenix probably thought he was cooking. He's like, oh cool, Ruddy gave me an NA Protoss. Game starts, kills some adapts, kills the Nexus. He's probably giggling. He's like, cheers Ruddy. Easiest 80 bucks I've ever made in my life. Two minutes later, it doesn't look all that easy anymore. I have no idea how he's going to stop an army of two Immortals. Maybe the Stalkers can blink and find the Prism. That's exactly what's going to happen. They will blink forward. The Observer was right on top of it. So that is the start. The units are stuck right now. Maybe we have to recall out. Nope, he doesn't want to recall out. He wants to blink out. His extra units have shown up. He's now going to try ahead and take this fight against two Immortals. We'll get the first one rather quickly. He's going to get the second one, I think, as well down the line. I wouldn't let this... Uh, okay, that's a good recall. I like this recall. What a game. Now, Night Phoenix is still the one who's up six workers. What am I looking at? This is a Clown Fiesta. Meanwhile, Petty Mac is working on three gas already, which is very early. Nah. If that Prism guys would have just been with the army, then I think there is no way that Night Phoenix gets a good fight there. But the Prism being revealed first by this pylon and then by the Observer allowed him to snipe the Prism before the army showed up. And obviously then it is possible to fight these units. As Night Phoenix is going to blink into the main base, he's going to unpower these two gateways immediately. As another get pylon gets unpowered, all the production is unpowered right now. Will it go for the Immortal? That's my big question. Will not go for the Immortal, but Petty Mac can't produce anything. As he loses the Observer as well. Oh, 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 oh. Took a, took a little while to get that pylon going too. We do have two adapts on the other side of the map. They have scouted the fact that Night Phoenix is going up to three bases. And these two adapts have good potential. Very good potential. Night Phoenix is still looking on the other side of the map with his Stalkerinos. Not a uh, surround that I would make with my probes here. 
And now he actually grabbed all the probes, so he loses even more mining time. As we have a forward blink, and Night Phoenix tries to get as many stocks as possible. There is a battery overcharge. Battery overcharge is good for a little while. All the stock has died, though, but at least the Immortal lives. The new Immortal... What? Why? Why? You have a second Immortal on the way. You can wipe in some units. I don't get that. Why? What? I mean, it's obviously not looking great, but... I, I don't know. I, I, I wish he would have tried a little bit longer. You still have a battery full of energy. You have an Immortal. You have a second Immortal on the way. You can get a couple of Stalkers out. I don't think that was necessary. He clearly thought that this was a whole lot worse than what it actually ended up being. Surprising timing for a GG. But uh, to each their own. Let's go ahead and see what the second map is. Uh, Grasswan Royal Dragon. So Grasswan is up next. That was, uh, I think, a bit too early to leave. Like, obviously, if that Immortal falls too, then we can always leave. But that was still very close. At least in my eyes. But... Alright. Uh, Grasswan Game 2. Invite to game, invite to game. Uh, next up at ESL Masters, guys, they have one more series in Europe, and that will be Clem versus Elaser. After that, they have a long break. So, we can uh, maybe sneak in our series before America continues tonight. Did Jax not want the Pikachu? Mate, Jax went to town on this Pikachu. I, uh, I don't know what my brother has done with him. But Jax walked into the living room and he started uppercutting Pikachu through the air. <laughs> like left uppercut, right uppercut. It was just bouncing all over the place. I'm like, hey! <laughs> it's like, go easy. <laughs> Alright, uh, players are ready. I'm ready. Let's go ahead and hop into game two. It's like a, a little Apollo Creed over there. Huh. A future champ. Oh no. If I know my brother and his wife. I am not sure if they would let him do uh, that kind of combat sport. Even though my brother did it, but a lot of things that parents did when they were younger, they wouldn't let their children do. So I don't know if my brother would uh, let him ever go to boxing, but we'll Game see. Paused. A casual training, sure. But actually competitive and fighting, probably not. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Night Phoenix said just, can we regame? And then he just left. So I guess <laughs> the answer to your question is yes. Oh, he had a console bug. Okay. He had, he had random colors. Sometimes when you host games, people get random consoles and the players find it distracting. Mm. And he is just going to reboot the game quickly and then we'll hop into game two. Thank you, Jarkmon, for the 73 months. Hello, Anubis, as well. Mm hmm. He knows you can change in collection. Yeah, but I think there was a bug. We'll just wait. All right, we'll just wait until uh, our man is ready to hop into game two. So 1-0 lead for Night Phoenix in a game that was all over the place. Great start for Night Phoenix, terrible mid game, and then a win that still has a tiny question mark for me. I think he could have tried, but it is what it is. 1-0 for our Ukrainian young man. As, uh, he is back on Battle.net, and we're going to try to start. Oh, my God. <laughs> I kid you guys not. Every game is like privacy, privacy, privacy. He's aware that uh, we are streaming, right, guys? And that we are uploading the games on YouTube. It's such a pro gamer thing that I never truly understood. I do get it. I guess the next time that he's playing a tournament, if it's all in the Battle.net history, it will take his opponent two seconds to see his previous build order. Well, if it's just here, then it would take his opponent actually to all tap, to open YouTube, or take a look at my Twitch VOD, but I don't know. I still feel like they're overdoing it a little bit. But it's all good. We let them do what they want to do. Round two, fight! 
In the bottom right side of Gresvan, we are looking at the main base of the man who left a little bit too early to my taste in the previous game, but he probably thought he was in all sorts of trouble when his opponent had three bases, he only had two, he lost all of his stalkers, he only had one immortal, but it really was still kind of close. I think he could have made something out of it. Our boy from the Golden State, this is Paddy Mac, who says he apparently only has 100 ping to Europe, which... I find fascinating because when I lived in uh, Los Angeles, I definitely did not have a hundred ping to Europe. Europe was unplayable. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. Maybe it got better over time. In the top left side, uh, representing hot headed gaming, we are looking at the main base of our Ukrainian Protoss taking the 1 0 lead. It's not his first rodeo in the big rain bouts. This is Night Phoenix. Night Phoenix was known as a sly crap in the past. That is the name that he used when he was competing in some of the junior competitions of Alpha X and uh, stuff. But for YouTube they do not uh, Mercado. And obviously these nerds are loyal ruddy subs mate so don't worry. He's not, he's in Nashville, aha. Uh -huh. Okay that makes sense. Yeah okay. I thought he was still on the west coast. Please. Maybe he was never on the west coast and I just imagined he was. <laughs> It just always looks so sunny in his Instagram videos that I assumed it could only be California. I feel like they don't, they don't even have Camaros on uh, <laughs> Camaros and Mustang convertibles in Nashville, no? I thought they only drive Ford F-150s there. He studies in Nashville, but he's originally from Cali. Okay. So I was still onto something. <laughs> cool. Thank you for letting me know, mate. That uh, clears up a few confusion. Yeah, I think when I was on the West Coast, my... <laughs> he does it again. My ping to uh, Korea was actually better than my ping to Europe. Alright. So Night Phoenix has a, fe a, ga a pylon on the other side of the map. And that obviously makes sense. Because with that pylon, you can see what comes out of the gateway. And then you know you have to prepare for either adapts or stalkers. Paddy Mac... Well, this is not totally standard, but apparently for Paddy Mac it's pretty standard, and he just likes to do this. The man just casually builds a Nexus in the main base of Night Phoenix. It's gonna keep the Stalkers occupied. I guess one more benefit that I see from doing this is that it's very safe for your first two adapts to run to the other side of the map. You do not have to worry about... Ooh, that's close. That was a very close call. You don't have to worry about... Shading your adapts towards the top left and then immediately getting jumped upon by a couple of stalkers. But it's still a big investment. And I think Paddy Mac is actually in some real trouble here because he's a very greedy boy here in game 2. Goes for an ultra quick nexus. So it's double adapt, double sentry expand. Uh, I don't know how you deal with uh, one base blink stalker all -ins. Last game obviously Night Phoenix expanded and that slows him down for a little bit initially. I, I don't see Paddy Mac surviving this. I'm afraid that our man of, uh, from the US of A is in a little bit of trouble. Maybe Night Phoenix will mess up, but... This uh, young man from Ukraine does a whole bunch of one base all ins and obviously we can't fault him for it. He's not here to entertain us, there is money on the line, he just wants to win. And he wants to impress us. And, yeah. If he thinks that this is the right way to go about it, I think that's unbelievable. It's too early, I think, to have an Immortal. If I was Night Phoenix, I would ignore this Immortal. I do not believe that. You're gonna tell me 4 minutes and 20 seconds into the game, you've got a battery, a Nexus, and a depth. You open over the Nexus in my main, and you've got an Immortal. I'm not buying that. Like, maybe like hallucinating a few Stalkers is a play. But I feel like the Immortal, that's just kind of unbelievable. Hmm? Blink is about to finish up for Night Phoenix. We have another hallucinated immortal. Now that one could be real and it could force out a full volley. Not one but two batteries. Here we go. We have the stalker shooting at the immortal immediately. I think at this point Night Phoenix should already know that it was fake. I do like the double battery. Blinks forward. He goes for that immortal. But he's just got so many stalkers guys. That the stalkers of Night Phoenix are going to one shot every single stalker pretty much of Fatty Mac. And sure, there are sentries and adepts and probes and one zealot finding some damage, but I don't think it's ever going to be enough. But we do have an overcharge, and at this point, the stalker number of Night Phoenix has dwindled a little. 
Are we allowed to believe, guys? Are we allowed to believe? As Paddy Mac is getting quite close to his own blink. And then it's still two bases against one. And not a forward blink. I don't know if I like that forward blink. Well, we have a couple of extra stalkers showing up. But I still think this one was very, very, very ambitious. He does reset the stock account completely, so maybe in that way it was great. I have never seen a Zealot get this many hits off, by the way. If Paddy Mac wins this game, he needs to build a statue for that Zealot. The problem is, I don't think he's winning this game. He's got how many gateways himself? Three. Ooh, a lot of probes being pulled right now. Pylon gets picked off. As another forward blink goes down, Paddy Mac shoots at his own shield battery there. That is not a quite the play. Uh, not in the forward blink. Night Phoenix so decisive. I think one of these blinks was a little bit questionable. And Paddy Mac did good for a while. He made it slightly closer than I thought it was going to be. But I think in the end a Ukrainian young man. Too decisive. Too clean. Knows what he needs to target. Knew what he had to go for. I think he's going to get the job done here. GG gets called. And Night Phoenix takes the 2-0 lead. In our second best of five the night. And I will just suggest to play game 3 on NA. Because I feel like if it's 2 well, there is already ping advantage. Uh, let's do game 3 on East. And then we see. It seems fair. Mm. Even though Paddy Max said that the ping is fine. Obviously uh, he will always have better ping on the American server than he has on the European server. So. Let's just go ahead and do that. It's time for a cold beer. I had one, but it's not cold anymore. Looks like Peach is trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> Pika had enough of the nonsense. He's like, man, I'm on this planet for two weeks and I have to listen to a nerd shout about probes and stalkers every single day. He's done, guys. He's trying to find a better life out there. Unfortunately, I'm going to keep him hostage. Uh, Royal Blood is going to be map 3. Hope the Paddy Mac at least gets a point on the board. That would make for a fun series. Mm -hmm. CS game heart. Night Phoenix invite the game. Paddy Mac. I'm not going to do the game uh, privacy. Let's see if he tells me again. Why does he say? Uh, okay. Well... That's temporary. If it's ultra bad, just let me know. We switch. He's showing me a screenshot of the ping temporarily being inflated, but uh, I, I know how that goes. Sometimes when you connect to a server, it says that you have 5,000 ping, but obviously you don't have 5,000 ping. It refreshes. Well, he cares about the privacy here too. <laughs> <laughs> Even on the NA server, guys. The man doesn't even play on the NA server. He's like, Roddy, privacy. <laughs> I'm just never going to switch it on purpose right now. I'm going to wait until he tells me every single time. <laughs> Make sure that he stays sharp. All right. Second best of five tonight. $100 on the line. A 2-0 lead for a young man from Ukraine. Can he close it out? Or on the American server? <laughs> Can Paddy Mac bring it back? That was Cero, by the way, guys. Talking about a cool unit. Cool unit. Probably the coolest unit in the game, if you ask me. I think he was talking about the Marine. Round three. Fight. In the top right side of Royal Blood are yellow protos representing hot headed gaming, hailing from Ukraine. Decisive and aggressive as we know him. In the first game, that didn't quite work out initially. In the second game did, even though it got somewhat close. This is Night Phoenix. Had a pretty decent run, I think, in the uh, ESL Masters. Made it to the final play day. Uh, that is obviously completely fine. I think that's a performance to be proud of. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base with man who I do think has the skills to make it into the playoffs in ESL Masters America. Unfortunately, it didn't work out this time around. I hope that we get to see him at Homestory Cup again, though, because... He is a lovely individual, a very sweet guy, and a great Protoss player. This is Paddy Mac. I think he had a great time as well last time around, so I'm sure he's going to try to make it to HSC, but I don't know if it's possible. You're going to be at Homestead Cup as well? 
Maybe you can even play Blood Milan. Maybe you can replace someone. <laughs> in uh, standard Home Story Cup fashion and history, I'm sure we're gonna have a last minute cancel or two, so. Maybe you can convince Naruto that it's your time to shine. <laughs> That's how I ended up playing in Home Story Cup once. One of the guys cancelled one day in advance and then I replaced them. And I took a map of Hero Marine. I was good back then. Maybe you can become the new Ian Blue. Hey, Ian Blue's a legend, okay? Do not do not bu bully our man Ian Blue. Just because he went 0-7 and 0-14. Are we gonna drop the Nexus again? It seems like uh, this is just his default. He has money for it and he's going to do it. I know they say never change a winning team, but if the team ain't winning, maybe eventually we should change it. Because I don't think that Night Phoenix has particularly struggled uh, with the Nexus. For the first time around though, Night Phoenix is actually rallying the Stalkers out. So unlike the previous games, he's kind of ignoring it this time around. He is going to find uh, one adept. Betty Max opening was different. It wasn't double adept. It was a sentry adept. Uh, obviously a good start here when it comes to finding a lot of damage on that adept. We got a robo warped in on the side of Night Phoenix. Will the Nexus scout this? What can you do? Are you going to let the Nexus finish off? A force field. I think ideally you would have trapped one stalker. Yeah, that would have been good. But it's obviously hard to find a proper force field. Now Night Phoenix uses a recall. And he's like, wait a minute. The Nexus is gonna finish up. It's bait. I mean your guess is as good as mine, guys. I am I am not from NA. We were close to holding an American passport, but we didn't go all the way. So I just don't understand these things. <laughs> I uh, I can talk about soccer for days, but I think in the first game we did a decent job in trying to find some pluses of this. It is a bit weird. I do have the feeling that if you're the only one doing it at a very high level, I'm sure that there are people doing it at lower levels. It's probably not that great. <laughs> like until I see Max Packs build a Nexus in the on the other side of the map in somebody's main base, I will not accept this as a great opening. The prince needs to convince me. At least Paddy Mac does have a quick nexus. And uh, Night Phoenix actually went for the Observer. It's now also an Immortal out. Is that a second Observer? What is that all about? It's kind of weird. Double ops this early. As the four stalkers of Paddy Mac are going to get at least a kill on one Adept. And maybe that second Adept, he could hunt it down. Blink halfway done. Hmm. There is a Rotterdam in New York, guys. If I am from anywhere, I should be from Rotterdam, New York. Then I'm neighbors to Neep as well. I basically visit Neep every day. It's pretty awesome. But it, uh, I googled it and it does not look very impressive. <laughs> it does not look like a city that I really want to visit at all costs. So Penny Mac has a much quicker Blink. Blink is 85-90% done. As Blink gets fired up on the side of Night Phoenix, at least uh, the Immortals are going to keep our Ukrainian Proto safe. Otherwise, it could get a bit uncomfortable. One guy having Blink, you don't have Blink, and obviously you're going to get out micro but the Immortals will be able to do that thing. That's a big supply block, by the way, guys. 62 out of 62, not one, not two, but three pylons at once being warped in. And I know we can talk about ping and stuff, but being that this supply block has nothing to do with ping, it's obviously just a mistake. But it's still, uh, I would say, anybody's game. I favor Paddy's Mac position a little, even if Night Phoenix army is better. But the army is less mobile. But Paddy Mac's going to be able to go up to three bases quicker as a forge. The observers are a bit of a nuisance. And if you're Night Phoenix, right, and you see... Are you going triple ops? What is this all about? Why is Night Phoenix building mass observers like he's Pig Baby in his prime? That's weird. I would kind of drop a Dark Spine if I was uh, Night Phoenix. 
seem to be very, very worried about the Blink Stalker aggression, but he's got an army that's big enough that he can split it up and he'll be fine. Paddy Mac will finally find a one Stalker for his troubles, but... One Stalker is obviously not going to make the difference. Yeah, no, if it is PvT, then I do not mind a double or a triple Observer opening. But in PvP, I almost never see three Observers this quickly, unless you're 100% convinced it is DTs and it's DTs that need to find damage. Night Phoenix does have Blink too, so he's gonna go ahead and Blink forward after Petty Mac turned around for a split second. This move out, it is somewhat scary. Do we have a War Prism out? Yes. Ah, that's actually very scary. 16 Stalkers and 2 Immortals. As Petty Mac just kinda right now needs to warp in as many units as possible, loses a Stalker. That's not going to help. Charge 85% done, 90% done. We're close. Paddy Mac just needs to buy some time. One more big warp in, and I want to say he should be fine as we have another forward blink. Paddy Mac loses another stalker. Night Phoenix in a good spot here, but we have some sentries. We have zealots. Snipe the prism. Go. A move. Uh, he waits. He wants units. Okay, he's going to bait the fight near his battery. Stalker shoes really killed his warp prism, though. No? They killed the warp prism. The warp prism is not carrying anything. Zealots coming in from the bottom. I think if. Oh, look at the surface area on these zealots, guys. Now, obviously, Night Phoenix is going to have more stalkers, but. A big perfect fight for the Zealots getting right on top of the Immortals. And I do think that the War Prism movement there by Night Phoenix was a little bit questionable. Look at them Zealots guys, look at the boys go. Fatty Max says you're in my world right now sir. It is NA, it is his server and this is starting to look very very good for the man who's down 0-2. Now obviously if Fatty Mac does win this game I need to figure out what I'm going to do with uh, the ping. I think game 4 America and game 5 if we get there Europe and the reason for that is is that obviously I think A that's most fair but I do think that Paddy Mac has better ping to Europe than Night Phoenix has to America so 3 Europe to America I think that seems pretty fair 15 Zealots and 10 Stalkers on the side of Paddy Mac as Night Phoenix has a pure Blink Stalker army. Now that's an army that can obviously kite very well, cannot get surrounded though. I'm sure that he's going to do his best to avoid it. Ooh, I like that Blink. I like that Blink a lot. That is going to surprise Night Phoenix a little and will allow these Stalkers to get a lot of extra shots off. That is a cool Blink, man. Just blinking down those rocks and creating a, a little bit of a sandwich around immediately. Very well done. That is a very good way to still get value out of your Zealot Stalker composition against pure Stalkers. Now Night Phoenix has a Robo Bay. And he had a Disruptor on the production tab for a split second. Cancels the Disruptor, goes for a Colossus instead. It's uh, not the day of War Prisms. Or I was like, somehow this one lives and then Penny Mac just kind of chills with it again. Obviously not great War Prism play from either party so far in this game. Man. Often when we have competitive StarCraft, we are going to see mistakes because that's what these guys do. We have another forward blink uh, by uh, Paddy Mac. Gets a lot of extra shots off. Paddy Mac is down economically, guys. He's up in upgrades. He's down economically. He's going up to four bases. But he's taking some rather questionable fights. Ay ay ay. Fires up plus three. Loses another stalker in the process. I mean, I spoke about a game four and a maybe a game five, but. Upgrades heavily favored the American. But the probe count really wasn't all that sexy. And I did have at least full saturation. 8, 16, 16. So uh, that is obviously fine. He now has four bases. So we can start saturating that. But Paddy Mac is going to have to do slightly better in the fights. Uh, he has lost 22 Zealots and 15 Stalkers against the 28 Stalkers of uh, Night Phoenix. And don't lose this Nexus. Come on. You have a fast army. Power of the Mass Observer strategy as Penny Mac once more is going to try to blink from the high ground to the low ground. I mean, Night Phoenix gets the Nexus. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, at what cost? As we have a forward blink, they're kind of just trading out Stalkers here one by one. It will allow the Zealots to catch up one more time. Stalkers blink forward. Penny Mac trying to get as many casualties there as possible. He is fighting in range of immediate defensive reinforcements here. There are now two Colossus show up. And that's where the Zealots are going to struggle. I would fight that, yeah. I would punish... Try to punish that blink, but the Colossus in the back line, guys. These Colossi really putting a number on the Zealots. And Night Phoenix from Ukraine, even on the American server, is now actually looking very good as Paddy Mac has another misclick and another misclick. Oh, oh, oh. 
The losses in PvP, you don't see it very often. It's hard for them to shine. But that was a moment where they could have shined. But they're just firing at literally zealots and zealots only. Oh, Paddy Mac obviously was not supposed to lose this Nexus. That was like the one big advantage he had besides the upgrades. Uh, I don't think that was supposed to happen. His army was competitive enough to prevent that. Stalkers blink forward. We'll get one Colossus. Still upgrade advantage. Still defensive reinforcements advantage on the side of Paddy Mac. But I feel like he's just running out of units. It's all happening right before plus three kicks in. As Night Phoenix blinks forwards again. There is a 16 army supply late. He did rebuild his Nexus. Four base against four base. Can battery overcharge make the difference? How many gateways do we have? Ten against eight. 45 armies fly against 18 guys Night Phoenix so powerful so big How does the young man do it? He's got a good record. I feel like in the big brain bouts. I know that he had a nil biting loss once against uh, Our Spanish Terran player not Aquaron the other guy who's not really playing anymore Yeah, plus three does take a long time I think the Zealots, yeah, they can just go for the probes actually. The battery is not going to be able to heal up all of them. There is a little battery overcharge. Obviously, whatever can buy time for Paddy Mac here is the correct play, but I don't think Night Phoenix is really going to give him all that much time. As the Stalkers rotate around the map. They're going to try to take out another Nexus. We saw the one fall at the bottom side of the map. And this one, I think, is going to fall as well. Once more, Paddy Mac is a little out of position. Night Phoenix lost all of the observers, by the way. So it's not even that he's got crazy amounts of map vision. He's just playing very well. Night Phoenix is just playing very well. Should still have one Colossus here. Oh my god, he's got three. <laughs> I was like, I haven't seen them, but I know they're out there. He should still have one, right? Nope, he's got freaking three. I think it's ready. I think it's almost time to spam some beautiful GG emojis in the chat. Some Ronda faces. Okay, this could be a nicer run though. I like the idea. Cancel, please. He does cancel the Nexus. Can the Stalkers blink to the other side of the rocks? They're trying. They will make it. Uh, I think three Colossi is a good number. Ooh, snipes the battery immediately. He's gonna drop a couple force fields as well. Zealots cannot participate. Gonna recall the Zealots. Okay, this could be a play for Paddy Mac, guys. As now the Zealots, can they uh, can they make it through? Yes, two out of three Colossus have died. Colossus number three is in trouble as well. Uh-oh, Night Phoenix. Was this an overcommitment, my friend? As he was fighting without his Stalkers. Tried to get a little bit fancy there. He's still in a good economic spot, but he just lost a very big and very important army and you don't just rebuild three colossi quickly as he's not done yet bleeding out units oh my goodness that recall by paddy mac may have very well been a game saving recall i feel like night phoenix got a bit carried away and just tried to get too fancy nice around it always makes my warcraft 3 heart beat a tiny bit faster when i see these kinds of runs well, this game is just going bananas at this point, and I don't really know who I'm favoring. Spaddy Mac now has two Nexi going up at the same time, rebuilding the triangle, taking the one in the center of the map as well. I like Colossus, but obviously not like that when they are so exposed, when the armies are small. And I do sort of get it, he thought he was safe with the forest fields, but Spaddy Mac just had a great answer against the forest fields. As both of them now drop a Templar Archives. Night Phoenix still has way more probes. This Zealot run by. I'd go for the battery first. Ah, oh, Colossus. Colossus is gonna keep Night Phoenix's natural savior as the army is still flirting with each other in the center of the map. It's a great game. Obviously, a sloppy game with a couple of big mistakes on either side, but this is honestly a very fun PvP between two excellent brothers players from different regions. As it is Paddy Mac right now, who's once more forcing back the army. Zealots trying to win the fight against Zealots, the Stark and the Colossus. Can the Colossi die against three Zealots? No. And Colossus really are fantastic units against light armored uh, Zealots. I just realized that I still haven't done my hair yet, guys. Now I need you guys to let me know is it worth doing my hair for the final two best of fives of the day? Should, shall I just save my wax for a different day? Because <laughs> obviously once I am done with the big brain bouts tonight, I am going to wrap it up. Where are the disruptors? Well, it's not a disruptor game. Neither of them are very eager in uh, Neither are very eager to go into the disruptor. It's not save it and grab a whiskey instead. 
I think I'm with you. 92 probes, by the way. That is an absolute uh, metric crap ton of probes. It's not a Nexus dice. What have we got here? A couple of adepts trying to pick off a few probes as well. The harassment by Night Phoenix is great. Zealots are not gonna have a good time against two shield batteries and two cannons. Especially not with all these Colossi still around. I mean, Paddy Mac is gonna have a very hard time fighting with Zealots against Archons and Colossus. Fighting against one of the two is already difficult. Fighting against both. At this point, it's almost better for Paddy Mac to never make Zealots again. Just make pure Stalkers. Pure Stalker would be fine. Stalker Disruptor would be totally fine. Oh, I don't want no, no, why are you playing forward? You saw him recall. Oh my goodness. No. Oh. Yeah, he's gonna lose so much. Paddy Mac, he saw the recall and he stared at it and he said, all right, give me some of that. I want that. And now it's Night Phoenix who has once more taking a monstrous army supply lead. As that was a crazy YOLO forward blink. I don't know if he thought he could kill the Nexus before the recall went off, but that clearly was not the case. And I think his army is just too small, man. There are a couple zealots in the top left side, but they are running into batteries and cannons as well. It is Night Phoenix who gets the trio, the clean sweep, in our second best of five of the night. And let's go ahead and take a look at a <laughs> remarkable forward blink here by Paddy Mac, guys. This was an entertaining game, very action-packed, very back and forth. I wasn't spotted by it. I, he's like, he runs in here, he sees the uh, Rico, and he's like, Rico, yeah, give me some of that, and he blinks for it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and obviously, with the problem of blinking forward, is that you can't blink out anymore, so you're stuck. You're committed to this fight. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a questionable forward blink. Something about the tiger in the room, guys. And kicking the tiger in the you know what. GG gets called. Fun third game. Impressive uh, performance today by Night Phoenix. As he has been spamming you for a while. He wanted to play in the big brain bouts again. I thought this would be a difficult match for him. Because Paddy Mac had a great showing at Homestory Cup. Recently played in the ESL Masters NA. So he clearly has been active. But Night Phoenix proved to be the better PvP player today. GG got called. And that will do it. We'll settle that prediction and I'll give you guys our next prediction.